So Suresh, a very warm welcome to the podcast and the series, Agentic AI for Enterprise Leaders. And especially on today's episode, using Agentic AI in tables automation. Uh, but before we delve into the depth of the topic, just wanted to understand from you a little bit about your background, your journey, about the company that you represent and so on. Good morning, uh, Virendra. Thanks uh, for investing this time on this podcast. Uh, great to meet you here. Uh, I work for the Olam Group. Uh, Olam is a, a 40 billion global uh, uh, agricultural supply chain manager based out of Singapore, listed in Singapore, and operating in uh, 60 countries. I have spent 29 years with Olam, and currently I am the uh, Chief Executive Officer of MindSprint, which is the independent technology services arm of Olam. MindSprint uh, supports Olam end-to-end -end, uh, on uh, enterprise applications, maintaining infrastructure, cybersecurity, uh, business process services, advanced data analytics, and digital. On top of that, MindSprint also supports customers across the globe. And uh, MindSprint is focused on supporting customers in uh, the food industry, in CPG, retail, uh, in supply chain, life sciences, offering these services across the verticals I mentioned from IT to BPO to cybersecurity. Wonderful. First, tell us what kind of services you give and then what led us led you to go for touchless automation in yeah. the table function. So in MindSprint of the various verticals, uh, our, uh, BP, which was uh, intelligent, we call it as an intelligent automation enterprises, which is a classic BPO, is a very large offering that we do for Olam and other customers. We have more than a thousand employees in the space, supporting end-to-end uh, -end on uh, finance, uh, on people uh, practices, uh, shipping and logistics, taxation, legal, uh, and risk management solutions. But I think the key differentiator is in providing all these services, we try and overlay a process mining capability and an intelligent automation that allows us to continuously refine these offerings to our customers. So this is not a traditional BPO. Essentially, what you are saying is that you are cannibalizing your own business by automating a lot so that you can get a lot more done, provide a lot more value to your customer with a lot fewer uh, people in the... Yeah. In fact, uh, very early on when uh, RPAs were introduced, we uh, started experimenting with uh, RPAs, whether it's Automation Anywhere or UiPath. And even four or five years back, we were uh, deploying hundreds of RPAs in automating various processes. And now with the advent of uh, uh, AI, Gen AI and Agentic AI, we are embedding a lot of those capabilities in uh, building autonomous agents to deliver these classic services, whether it's uh, accounts payables, or accounts receivables, uh, uh, all these capabilities are being built in on these core offerings. Yeah, so I understand that you've been running for about one year uh, the Touchless Tables platform. That's the first area I think you've chosen to go touchless completely. So tell us about your experience, journey, your customers, the kind of benefits that your customer has got and the challenges you faced in you know, getting the kind of accuracy that we companies struggle with and so on. Because despite all the hype, we still see a lot of people processing their tables with significant amount of manual effort. Accounts payables is a very mundane, boring process for many organizations and also cumbersome uh, in terms of not being able to uh, achieve the pinnacle of automation because of various inefficiencies in the processes companies has. So AP always has been a focus for MindSprint. We have gone through various maturity curves in terms of how we can uh, use technology to make it more efficient and seamless. And more importantly, to a point where it could be done without any human intervention. So I would say in the last uh, four years or so, our AP processes were using a lot of RPAs in helping uh, processing payments efficiently. But we have now created a platform called PayX, uh, what we call as uh, 
touchless uh, payment processing platform, uh, which has multiple agents uh, built in, working together as one uh, autonomous agent that does multiple roles right from scanning emails, responding to suppliers on emails based on the context of the language that uh, is there in the emails, uh, to an agent that does uh, what we call as uh, intelligent extraction of extracting content from invoices. Uh, and it could scan and read more than 100 languages. So extracting the content from uh, invoices in multiple languages in different formats and uploading into ERP after doing multiple validation checks. So there is a validation agent which would uh, check the uh, procedures and policies uh, applicable for that company in terms of a two-way matching or a three-way matching. So tell us how how does it handle multiple formats? Because every supplier has a different format and they will not be giving in the format that you want. And you also mentioned multiple languages. Yeah. So how are you able to transform and what's the kind of degree of accuracy that you have seen in the process? I think uh, the... Uh... The ability to handle multiple formats and multiple languages is purely because uh, of uh, the intelligent extraction agent that we have. The accuracy fact that you mentioned, see, we uh, are able to improve on accuracy continuously because the A component also does uh, process mining. So as it is processing invoices, as it experiences delays and hurdles in the processes, it also learns which allows us to come up with uh, new solutions to uh, modify our capabilities. So the process mining that continuously works at the back end helps to improve accuracy over a period of time. So we would say our SLAs with our customers offer 99.99% accuracy, which means that we have to process accurately to that level in ensuring that we pay correctly. There are no duplicate payments and there are no erroneous payments for a single invoice. So when does human come in? picture at all or is it you the don't human, need anybody no no the humans uh, come in terms of uh, dashboards to monitor the whole ap service so we have dashboards that would give uh, 24 by 7 uh, inputs on what's happening in the ap how many invoices are on queue how many invoices have got rejected what is the noise uh, being created in the processes what is the process mining agent uh, give in terms of why certain Invoices are not going through, uh, uh, you know, touchless payment. So this uh, dashboard allows a human who is responsible for the AP function to be able to better use the time in uh, solving out and solving for exceptions rather than looking at whether every invoice is being correctly processed and paid or not. So that's where the human intervention comes in place. And uh, you mentioned that uh, you respond to the suppliers intelligently. So let's explain a bit in terms of, let's say you find an error in the invoice. So what kind of errors you're able to find? Uh, I think in AP, the typical errors would be uh, the invoice amount is not matching with the PO or the invoice quantity is not matching with the goods received note. Uh, or there is a supplier name or code uh, mismatch. Uh, the intelligent response also is able to read the context and the mood of the emails that come from the suppliers. So if there is a standard invoice query coming in, it could reply in terms of the invoices in queue or it's processed or it has already been paid. But if there is an agitated uh, email coming in that could guess the mood and probably escalate where a human could uh, intervene and ensure there is a personal touch with an important supplier and not leave it to uh, an agent to respond for an agitated uh, you know, uh, situation that a supplier is uh, facing. And since your client is a very large company, I am assuming that you are paying through multiple banks, multiple currencies spread across multiple nations and multiple local finance leaders are involved in their respective territories with the payments. Is, is that correct? To yeah. So one of our large customers is our uh, uh, ex-captive group, uh, uh, Olam Food Ingredients and Olam Agri. And they have operations uh, across the globe in more than 60 countries, uh, which also means that invoice come in uh, multiple uh, languages. So the PayX platform that we have built uh, was 
uh, out of our support for Olam Group, which allowed us to take in what we have learned and apply AA to be able to cater to multiple countries, multiple invoice types, multiple languages, and multiple banks and mul different time zones as well. So the advantage of having a completely touchless payment uh, system is that uh, you can process an invoice on a Saturday on a, or a Sunday and give an instruction to the bank to pay. And at the next working day, the payment will get made. And uh, are your agents intelligent enough to tell which invoices to pay early to avail early payment discount and and also to avoid any penalties for delayed payment and so on and so forth? I mean, does it does it is it able to guide the the person process people processing the payment as to? Uh, not yet. We have not built that, but the intelligence that we have from the uh, platform allows the our customer to use the data to see how they can take advantage of managing their payment processes. Today, as long as the rules are defined that certain play, supplies have to be paid within 24 hours, certain supplies have to be paid in 30 days, it follows that. Uh, the intelligence is supplied where there are typical pain points in an AP process. For example, which GL code you have to book an expense item. That is a pain point for many large companies, despite having a must data management. Our AI will be able to, based on past accounting of similar invoices and similar suppliers, will draw an inference, even if there is no account code mentioned, it will be able to record in a particular account code using its own intelligence. But we have not gone to the uh, stage of optimizing cash flow, something that you have mentioned, but it's very much possible because the data is there. Oh, so that basically the 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 treasury agent is still not in places yet. Yeah, yeah, not it. And is the offering tied to SAP or no? Any system. We have linked it to SAP because uh, Olam uses SAP, but it is uh, interfaceable with uh, any ERP. So I can use Oracle in for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, we have built this system for Olam with uh, open text, but it could be also built with any uh, open source systems, which would make it affordable and easily accessible for uh, uh, any number of. Uh, and uh, you will be LLM agnostic, or do you are you tight to any LLM? No, agnostic, agnostic. We are uh, as we speak this morning, uh, Alibaba's uh, Quen. Uh, is being talked about mm -hmm. in the media. Uh, mm -hmm. And DeepSeek is just about one week uh, old. So our teams are already running some models on DeepSeek. And uh, I've just made a call this morning to uh, ask my team about what this uh, Quen is about that Alibaba is talking and how we can leverage. So we are agnostic uh, to uh, any large language models. So essentially, you are kind of bleeding edge tech, normally not expected from... Uh services company. I mean, you've downloaded DeepSeek and you're trying when and so very, very commendable as to what the speed at which you are. So what what else is in store? What should we expect next from MindSprint in terms of agentic automation and so on? I'll come to that. Before that, I'll, I'll tell you why we are doing this. Uh, two reasons. One is, you know, MindSprint was born out of Olam. So we carry the same entrepreneurial spirit of continuously trying to invent something. So our DNA is insurgency, not being an incumbent. So everybody comes to office thinking that if we don't do something different, tomorrow we may not have an office to come. Right. So that is the level of fire we have lit in terms of people to see how we can innovate. So that insurgency uh, uh, is, is uh, one reason why we are continuously focusing on innovation. The second reason is purely productivity. You know, in classic BPO, if you don't innovate, you will not be able to uh, compete at all just because of the inflation in the countries where you are having a uh, workforce. And if you have a uh, workforce in India, six, seven, eight percent inflation every year will never allow you to compete or provide service in any meaningful manner to your offshore clients, onshore clients in US or European markets. Understanding that we focus on productivity in a very, very strong way, where uh, every year we will have to beat the inflation, where we are cost neutral to uh, recipients of service. And the only way we can maintain edge is by adapting the latest technologies. So I guess, Suresh, you, you almost sound like a high-end CTO rather than a finance person. 
No, I am very much for that. Now, if you grill me on some tech concepts, I'll probably uh, give a blank face. But I've not addressed your second question. What more? Now, there is another yeah. important tool for another podcast, perhaps, uh, which is a, a procurement optimization uh, platform we built called Procon, and fully on Gen AI, that allows again today our main customer OLAM to optimize procurement, non-commodity procurement, which runs into billions of dollars. Probably we can reserve that for a later day to deep dive of what Procon does and how it can help customers across the globe. And uh, I mean, apart from serving OLAM, are you ready to take anybody else who is inspired by this story to try out hyper automation, touchless? Yeah. Journey? Yeah, we already have about uh, 13 to 14 customers outside of OLAM. And the big point of attraction in bringing those customers into discussions with us is AI, NEI, agentic agents, and advanced data analytics. So we are already working with a few customers on these platforms. And PayX especially, a lot of inbound inquiries coming in, uh, looking at the touchless uh, platform that we have built. And I think it's got a great potential. Great talking to you. And I, for once, never expected a finance person to be talking DeepSeek and Gwen, Gwen model. DeepSeek, the whole world is talking, I might have expected, but Alibaba's model is, is something I was not expecting. So wonderful to have somebody who's in total tune with technology and guiding the organization where the world is headed. As Satya Nadella says, there will be no SaaS software there will be only agents. And Yan Song Wong says that we will be managing agents, we won't be managing people. I hope we don't see that error, but just in case, I think you seem to be better prepared than anybody else. So on this note, I think thank you so much, Suresh. Great to have you on this podcast and look forward to the next edition. Thank you. Thank you, Virender. Thanks for uh, this time and uh, enjoyed the discussion with you. Have a good day. <laughs>